Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today, we're diving into a case that's as haunting as it is mysterious. The disappearance of Sneha and Philip. This story is intertwined with one of the most tragic events in modern history, the 9-11th attacks. So, let's get into it. Today, we're zeroing in on Sneha and Philip, a name that has puzzled investigators and captivated true crime enthusiasts for years. Sneha was more than just a missing person. She was a young, vibrant doctor with a promising career ahead of her. She had graduated from a prestigious medical school and was in the midst of her residency in New York City, the city of dreams and endless possibilities. But Sneha was not just defined by her profession. She was a complex individual with a rich tapestry of experiences and relationships. She was married to Ron, another medical professional, and the two were navigating the ups and downs of married life in one of the busiest cities in the world. Now, let's talk about the date that changed everything, September 10, 2001. This was the last day Sneha was seen. And her actions on this day have been the subject of much speculation. Security footage captured her shopping at a department store, buying items that suggested she had plans, perhaps for the immediate future. But what those plans were, nobody knows. Her disappearance is shrouded in mystery and has led to a myriad of theories. Some suggest she perished in the 9-11th attacks, possibly while heroically helping others. Others think she may have used the chaos of the situation to start anew, leaving behind a life that had its share of challenges, including recent job loss and legal issues. So, as we delve deeper into this enigmatic case, we'll be exploring all these facets of Sneha's life and the theories surrounding her disappearance. Was she a hero caught in a tragic event? Or is there another layer to her story that remains uncovered? Stick around as we try to piece together the life and mysterious disappearance of Sneha and Philip. Building on what we've just discussed about Sneha's life and the complexities surrounding her, let's now focus on the last time she was seen, September 10, 2001. This date is crucial because it's the day before the 9-11th attacks, an event that would not only shake the world but also add an extra layer of complexity to Sneha's already puzzling case. Sneha was captured on a security camera in a department store. Now, this wasn't just any random shopping trip. She was seen buying lingerie, bed linens, and a dress. These purchases have led to a lot of speculation. Was she planning something special? A romantic evening, perhaps? Or maybe she was preparing for a significant life change? Remember, she had recently landed another job, so maybe this was a new beginning for her. What's intriguing is her demeanor during this shopping trip. She seemed relaxed, even happy, with no signs of distress or worry. It's as if she was just another New Yorker going about her day, completely unaware that these moments would be the last recorded instances of her life. But here's where the mystery deepens. After leaving the store, Sneha vanished. No phone calls, no messages, nothing. She didn't return home that night. And her husband Ron reported her missing the next day, a day that would be overshadowed by the catastrophic events of 9-11. So, what happened to Sna after she left that department store? Did she meet someone? Did she go somewhere specific? Or did she find herself caught in the chaos of the following day? These questions have baffled investigators, family, and even armchair detectives for years. As we've just discussed, Sneha's last known moments were captured on September 10, 2001, a day that would be tragically eclipsed by the events of the following morning. This brings us to the most chilling and perplexing aspect of her disappearance, the proximity to the 9-11 attacks. Sneha lived in Lower Manhattan, not far from the World Trade Center. Given her medical background and her proximity to Ground Zero, some theories suggest that she may have rushed to the scene to offer medical assistance. It's a possibility that aligns with her character as a compassionate doctor, someone who had dedicated her life to helping others. But here's where it gets even more haunting. If Sna did indeed go to the World Trade Center to help, she would have been one of the brave souls who risked their lives that day. Could her medical training and her instinct to help have led her into the chaos, never to return? This theory gains some weight when you consider that her husband Ron reported her missing on September 11, the same day as the attacks. The timing is eerie, to say the least and it adds another layer of complexity to an already baffling case. However, it's important to note that this is just one theory among many. While it's compelling and aligns with what we know about Sna, there's no definitive evidence to support it. But it's a theory that we can't ignore, given the timing and circumstances. So, did Sna and Philip become an unsung hero of 9-11, or is her disappearance unrelated to that fateful day? As we continue to explore this case, we'll examine all the angles, trying to piece together what really happened to her building on the haunting possibility that Sneha may have been involved in the 9-11th tragedy. Let's now turn our attention to the role of the NYPD in this intricate puzzle. As you can imagine, the police were overwhelmed with the catastrophic events of September 11. The city was in chaos, and resources were stretched thin. 
Yet, amidst all this, they still had to investigate individual missing persons cases, including Snaha. Initially, the NYPD considered Snaha as one of the potential victims of the 9-11 attacks. It made sense at the time, given her last known whereabouts and the proximity to Ground Zero. Her name was even temporarily included in the official list of 9-11 victims. But as the dust settled and investigations progressed, the police started to have second thoughts. You see, there were inconsistencies in Snaz's case that didn't quite fit the 9-11 victim profile. For instance, she was last seen on September 10th, a full day before the attacks, and she didn't return home that night. This led investigators to explore other avenues. Could she have disappeared for reasons unrelated to 9-11? Was she facing personal issues that might have led her to walk away from her life? The police also interviewed friends, family, and acquaintances, trying to piece together Snaz's last movements. They looked into her recent job loss, her legal troubles, and even her marital life. Each clue seemed to open up more questions than answers, making this one of the most baffling cases the NYPD had to deal with in the aftermath of 9-11. So, what did the police conclude? Well, the unsettling truth is that they couldn't reach a definitive conclusion. Snaz's case remains unsolved, leaving us with a web of theories and speculations. As we delve deeper into this enigma, we'll explore these theories and try to understand why, despite the best efforts of the NYPD, Snaha and Philip remains missing. So, after years of investigation, where did the NYPD land on Snaz's case? The unsettling answer is that they couldn't definitively solve it. Despite their best efforts, the case remains open and classified as a missing person case to this day. While Snaha was initially considered a potential victim of the 9-11 attacks, the lack of concrete evidence led investigators to remove her name from the official list of victims. It's a frustrating and heartbreaking conclusion not just for the police but also for Snaha's family and for all of us who seek answers. The NYPD had to move on to other pressing cases, but for those who knew Snaha and for us, the armchair detectives, the quest for the truth continues. All right, so we've talked about the police angle, but what about the people who knew Snaha best? Her family. This section is dedicated to exploring their side of the story, which is fraught with both theories and frustration. Snaha's husband Ron has been particularly vocal about his wife's disappearance. He's been at the forefront, pushing for investigations and keeping Snaha's story alive in the media. Ron firmly believes that Snaha was a victim of the 9-11 attacks, a theory that aligns with the family's belief that Snaha, being a doctor, would have rushed to help. But it's not just Ron who's been active in seeking answers. Snaha's parents and siblings have also been deeply involved. They've appeared in interviews, conducted their own inquiries, and even hired private investigators to dig deeper into the case. Their frustrations with the official investigation are palpable, especially given the lack of concrete answers. The emotional toll on the family has been immense. Imagine not knowing what happened to your loved one for years, while also grappling with the possibility that she might have been involved in one of the most tragic events in modern history. It's a heavy burden to bear, and one that they've shouldered publicly in their quest for closure. Continuing from our last section where we discuss the family's involvement, let's zoom in on a significant move made by Snaz's husband, Ron. Unsatisfied with the pace and findings of the NYPD's investigation, he took matters into his own hands and hired a private investigator. This is a step that underscores the family's frustrations and their determination to find answers. So, what did this private investigator find? Well, it's a mixed bag. The investigator delved into areas that perhaps the police had overlooked or didn't have the resources to explore. He interviewed friends, revisited security footage, and even looked into Snaha's professional and personal circles for clues. The findings were both enlightening and perplexing. On one hand, the investigator was able to rule out some theories, giving the family a sense of direction. On the other hand, new questions arose, adding more layers to this already complex puzzle. For instance, the investigator found inconsistencies in some witness statements, which led to further scrutiny and even more theories. Did the private investigator's findings change the course of the official investigation? Not dramatically, but it did add another layer of complexity and provided the family with some additional avenues to explore. It's a testament to how intricate and baffling this case truly is. Before we conclude, it's important to talk about how Sna and Philip is remembered today. After all the theories, investigations, and heartache, what remains is the legacy of a compassionate doctor and a loved family member. Despite the cloud of mystery that hangs over her disappearance, Snaha's impact on those who knew her is undeniable. Friends and family often speak of her kindness, her dedication to medicine, and her vibrant spirit. In interviews, her colleagues have praised her skills and empathy, qualities that make her absence felt even more deeply. Her family has also set up memorials and participated in events to keep her memory alive, a testament to the love and respect she garnered. In a way, Snaha's legacy serves as a beacon of light in a story shrouded in darkness. 
So, as we navigate the labyrinth of theories and uncertainties, let's not forget the person at the center of it all, a woman whose life, though cut short, left an indelible mark on those who knew her. And that, my friends, brings us to the end of the enigmatic and haunting case of Sna and Philip. While the questions outnumber the answers, and we may never know what truly happened to her, her story serves as a poignant reminder of the lives irrevocably changed by the events surrounding 9-11. Thank you for joining me today on this deep dive. If you found this story as compelling and thought-provoking as I did, don't forget to hit that like button, share this video, and subscribe for more true crime stories that need to be told. Until next time, stay curious, stay vigilant, and who knows, maybe together we can solve a mystery.